This video is to show you how to do auto regression. Now, before we can do auto regression, we're going to do an auto correlations test and then create lags for our variables and then do auto regression. And I'm going to show you with uh, problem 25 from the decision analysis textbook by Winston and Albright. And um, we're going to use P02 underscore 26 uh, Excel file to do this. First thing we're going to do is do the first six autocorrelations of this time series. Um, so going into, here's the data set, going into here, going into Stat Pro. How do we do this? So add in Stat Pro and time series and forecasting. Autocorrelations is the first thing we're going to do. Go highlight our data. We care about just the percentage changes. Now, Something to notice here, there's a blank in there. That's going to give us a problem. Uh, I'm going to see if I can make up that error message first before we continue. Percentage change is what we're going to work with, but little note, you never want blanks in Stat Pro. So first thing I'm going to do is see what happens when I put one in. I'm just putting the results here. Okay, it seemed to be okay. Um, when we go to do the auto regression this is going to be a problem we will see that later though okay so what we can see from here these first two are significant lags one and two um, they are highlighted or bolded here and in red here now the textbook asks us to do the first six so let's just ignore these remaining ones here okay I'm just gonna gray them out you don't have to but there we go. So based on the first six, um, next thing it asks us to do is to make a promising autoregression model. So how do we do that? So these first two lags are what we call significant. So what we want to do is lag the data in StatPro. Um, okay, so next thing to do, add-ins, StatPro, data utilities, create lagged variables. And we want to do this on the percentage changes. Little note, so far these blanks in the percentage changes are okay. We will see that later though. It will cause a problem when we get to the regression. Number of lags, two. Why two lags? Because these first two are what we call significant. So we're going to use them in our what's called auto regression model. Okay, three models we're going to do. Model one using lag1 um, as the independent variable. Okay, model 2, we're going to use lag2 as the independent variable. And model 3, and we'll complete these as we go, we're going to use lags1 and 2 as the independent variables. Okay, so first one we're going to use lag1 as the independent. How do we do that? So, add-ins, stat pro, regression, okay, and um, under multiple regression, we're going to go highlight our data. Now, this is where we should finally get an error. Bear with me here. Notice there's going to be some blanks in the data here. Um, and I'm, my model one, I'm just going to use the lag1. And then the original percentage change, so I'm going to use lag1 to predict the percentage change. So I'm going to highlight those two variables. And what is going to be the dependent is the percentage change, or y. Our independent is the lag1. Click OK through here. This looks good. And here we go. Here is the error message I wanted to show you. So in this data set, there are some blanks. When you get to the regression, that's going to cause a problem. Okay, so in order to avoid that, I'm just going to delete this sheet. What we need to do is get rid of these blanks right here. Best way to do that, go get rid of any cells with blanks in them. Um, and what you should really do, you should really preserve your original data. Oops, sorry. Preserve your original data and make a copy of it where you delete the blank cells. And delete 
of these guys shoots the cells up. Now it didn't like that. We'll fix that in a second as well. Here's our original data. I'm just going to rename this copy of data. Okay, and one thing to fix, fix here, um, or what you can do as well, just to be sure, um, the 7.9 goes down here and here. Um, lag 1, it gets dropped down once. Lag 2, it gets dropped down twice. Going back here, what's above it is a 1. Okay, so that should drop down here and here. Beautiful. And above the 1 was another 1. So that should drop down here. The other way to avoid this, if you wanted, you could just literally go grab this data from before, copy it, however you get these errors, and when you go put it in here, notice I started copying when there were no more blanks, copy, and right here, paste special, just the numbers, get rid of the formulas. Uh, okay, so here's my data with no blanks, I'm now ready to run my regression. My first model, again, is the lag one model. Add in stat pro regression, multiple. Go highlight my data. Dependent is gonna be my percentage change, and I'm using the lag one as the explanatory or X variable to predict it. Click OK on this window, and here we go. Here's our first regression. Um, model number two is to use lag two as the independent. Okay. So coming back here, uh, add in stat pro regression multiple. We do all the same steps yet again. Highlight our data. Percentage changes are Y, and we're using lag two to predict it as our independent. Click OK. And here we go, here's our second model. I'm jumping through these fairly quickly, we'll make some conclusions at the end. Third model, so I need to run three regressions. Third one is using both the lags. Okay, once we're done running all the regressions, we're going to compare them. I'll put some results in here. Um, so regression analysis multiple again. Go highlight all my data, hit again. Click OK. Uh, percentage change still my Y. And I'm using lag 1 and 2 as my axes. Click OK. And here we go. Uh, so adjusted R for the third model um, is 0.44. Another thing to note, p-values here are both below 0 0.05, which is really good. So these two p-values are okay for the third model. The adjusted R squared is pretty weak, though. How does it compare to the other two models, though, is a good question. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so for model three, adjusted R squared is our 0.44, and all the p-values for the independent variables are below 0 0.05. Gorgeous. So that's model three conclusions. Just gonna put those in blue or something, easier to spot. Good. Model 2, how did it look? Let's take a look at model 2, which is just the lag 2. Um, for this one, we look at the r squared. Why? Because there's only one independent variable. If there's only one, we can look at r squared. If there's more than one, we need to use the adjusted r squared. r squared, pretty low, 0 0.071. Our p-values are okay, though. So we only have one variable, so only one p-value here. That guy looks okay. But this guy is really low. Let's make some comments here. So model 2. R squared. Sorry, and paste special lab. Good. Is 0 0.071. Uh, all p-values are okay. R squared, though, is really low. Let me make a little note here. This is very low. Okay. Model 1 was just using lag 1. Go in and look in here, r squared, 
for that guy, 0.415, so not bad. Again, we look at the R squared and not the adjusted because we only have one variable. P-value here is okay. Okay. Beautiful, so R squared, that guy's okay. So this R squared, it's all right, but model three R squared is higher. Gorgeous. So this guy's all right, but the model three one is higher. Final conclusion, model three is the best due to highest R squared value. It is still not a very strong model, however want the R squared or the adjusted R squared to be as close to one as possible. It's not very close to one, that's for sure. So yeah, we have um, an all right model. Best one is to use both the lags here as our independent variables, but um, I would not recommend any of these models uh, as forecasting models because that's not a very high adjusted R squared. 